Near the entrance to the ancient Acropolis was a temple to Victory. Its walls contain sculpted scenes of gods and battles. Built in the late 5th century BC, the decoration on and around the temple was in some ways unprecedented, including lost figures of gilded bronze, and some of the most famous surviving sculpture from all of the Acropolis. The temple stands on top of an ancient fortification dating all the way back to the Bronze Age, which, according to legend, played a role in the story of the Minotaur. This is James from History Victorum. From the Acropolis of Athens, join us as we explore the Temple of Athena Nike. The Temple of Athena Nike was built sometime in the late 5th century BC. Its exact date is still debated, possibly complete around 420 BC, with more sculpture added up until around 410. This was after the completion of the Parthenon and this great gate known as the Propylaea, which were both built around 432 BC. The Temple of Athena Nike stands at about 23 feet tall, but was also crowned with sculpture of gilded bronze on top of the temple. Much of the sculpted frieze on the temple survives today, which may have been the first to show historic battles on the walls of a temple. There was also once additional impressive sculpture around the fortification wall of the temple. Nike is the goddess of victory in battle and athletic contests. The most famous depiction of Nike is here at the Louvre Museum, which was created in the early 2nd century BC. Nike is shown many times on this frieze, which was once set up along the fortification wall of the temple. This frieze, about three and a half feet tall, with an additional bronze grill on top, help form a protective barrier wall for safety for the worshippers around the temple. The frieze in total was about 110 feet long and contained about 50 figures, some of which survive and are on display at the Acropolis Museum. These were very well crafted and included some of the most famous sculpture on the Acropolis. The one that first caught my attention was this one, where Nike is seen setting up a battle trophy. These trophies were built on the battlefield using the armor of defeated enemies. They were erected using a wooden post, which was set up on the area of the turning point of the battle. Here we can see Nike setting up a helmet on top of a wooden post. The figure to her right may have also been setting up a shield for the trophy. In this scene, we can see Nike leading bulls as sacrifice to Athena. Athena is shown several times on the frieze as well, seated with her shield. This one in particular was famous in ancient times, and other Roman copies were found. The most well known of these reliefs today is Nike adjusting her sandal, which was on the south side. It is praised for its use of drapery and how the figure is balanced. It uses the style of wet drapery. This style was first shown in the Parthenon, but here it takes it a step further, where some of the clothing is almost transparent. Nike is likely removing her sandal before entering the sacred area. The temple could be reached using stairs on the right side of the entrance to the Acropolis, which led up to the temple here, along with another entrance from the gate. Along the stairs was a relief of Nike ascending the stairway. From ancient depictions of Nike, it's believed that worshippers brought incense, as well as libations, which were poured an offering to the god. There was once an altar in front of the temple for sacrifices, which likely looked like this one found in the Agora. Athena was the goddess of several things, including craftsmanship, wisdom, and warfare. In Athens, Athena was worshipped in different forms. Here, she was worshipped as the personification of victory. She is shown prominently in the frieze at the entrance to the temple, flanked by Zeus and Poseidon, who are seated. A sacred statue of Athena Nike was present in the temple, holding a pomegranate in the right hand and a helmet in the left. This statue was later misinterpreted as Nike and was known as the wingless Nike in later centuries. The temple was built on an ancient fortification which projects outward near the entrance and dates all the way back to 1300 BC, which was the late Bronze Age and the time of the Mycenaean civilization. This type of projecting fortification, called a bastion, could be used to defend the entrance to the Acropolis, and projectiles could be thrown down from here at attackers. The ancient fortification played a role in the legend of the Minotaur. King Aegeus is said to have thrown himself off of this bastion in despair, believing that his son was dead. 
His son Theseus had made an agreement to show white sails on his ship if he was victorious against the Minotaur, and black sails were to be shown if he had been defeated. Theseus had forgotten to change the sail after defeating the Minotaur, which caused his father to believe he was dead. While Roman sources mention that King Aegeus threw himself into the sea, Greek writers mention him throwing himself off of a fortification, or specifically the Acropolis. According to Pausanias, the Greek writer from the 2nd century AD, it was from this very spot where the temple now stands where he glimpsed the black sails in the sea. Although this story is legendary, the large stones beneath the temple do in fact date from around 1300 BC. The 5th century Greeks were aware of his ancient past and left two openings in the wall here where the great stones from the Bronze Age can still be seen. There was an additional niche in this ancient wall, which perhaps served some ritual purpose, which is now lost. There was also an ancient sanctuary, where the Temple of Athena Nike now stands. Small female figures were found from the Bronze Age with outstretched arms, possibly indicating a protector goddess of some sort. And according to one theory, this may have been the predecessor to the goddess Nike. The first mention we have of Nike as a goddess was from a poem dating back to 700 BC, and from ancient inscriptions found on the site, we know that a sanctuary dedicated to Athena Nike existed here in the early 6th century BC. The temple we see today, dating from the late 5th century, was the first temple on the Acropolis to be built fully using the Ionic Order, which is known mostly from its decorative column capitals and bases, and its continuous frieze. This was different than the larger Doric style columns found on the Parthenon and the Propylaea. The Parthenon is known for having hidden refinements, almost imperceptible to the naked eye, and for having almost no straight lines on the building at all. The Temple of Athena Nike has refinements of its own, and may have been the first Ionic temple to have columns slightly inclined inward, which was previously only found on Doric temples. These stairs leading up to the temple were also slightly curved downward and backward. This was an innovation that may have first appeared on the Parthenon. Its columns are monolithic, meaning that they are made from a single block of stone, unlike the Parthenon and Propylaea, which are stacked in drums. They're also unusually thick for an Ionic temple, possibly to fit in with the Doric-style temples around the Acropolis. The temple is also unique in that it may have been the first to ever be sculpted with scenes of historic battles. Other temples depicted only mythological scenes. Here on the south side, we have a scene of Greeks fighting Persians. The Persians are shown wearing trousers and sleeve shirts. We're not exactly sure which battle it represents. The most common interpretation is that it shows the Battle of Marathon in 490 BC, where a force of Greeks defeated a Persian army, which was twice their size. Another interpretation is that it shows a scene just before the Battle of Plataea, which took place later in 479 BC. During the battle, the Persian cavalry commander Mecistius was thrown from his horse, and the Persians were defeated by a group of 300 Athenians. This scene could show Mecistius in midair while his horse rears up. The armor of Mecistius was captured by the Athenians and was on display in the Erechtheion, which was likely completed just after the Temple of Athena Nike. The friezes on the north and west sides show Greeks fighting other Greeks. Much of the north side is lost, and we aren't sure what it represents, but we can see a moment in time where a helmet is shown in midair after it had been knocked off in battle. In the 5th century BC, a series of wars called the Peloponnesian Wars were fought between the empires of Athens and Sparta. The west side could possibly show a battle against the forces of Corinth who were allies with Sparta. Around 457 BC, during the First Peloponnesian War, Corinth had sent forces to Megara, an area between Athens and Corinth, and believed that the Athenians would not be able to stop them since their forces were occupied elsewhere. But the Athenians raised a new force, partially of old men and young boys, to attack the Corinthians. The battle was hard fought, but in the end, the Athenians held their ground and set up a battle trophy. Later, the Corinthians returned, claiming that they had actually won, and attempted to set up a trophy of their own, but they were ambushed by the Athenians. 
We can see fighting going on under a trophy here, where we can make out a shield on a tree stump. The fact that some are shown without shields is thought to possibly indicate the surprise attack. Here we can see forces fighting over bodies, while another bends down to remove the body from battle. Possibly in ancient times, the figures could be identified using their helmets, which are now mostly lost, or possibly by how the figures were painted, as the frieze itself was once painted in bright colors. But for now, we can only guess. The triangular area on top of the temple here, known as the pediment, was also once sculpted, possibly with scenes of Bellerophon and the Pegasus, or gods versus giants, but we aren't really sure, as it does not survive. Some sculpture of water spouts in the shape of lions still survives above the frieze. From an inventory found at the Parthenon, we know that there was once a bronze statue covered with a layer of gold on top of the temple. Greek temples were crowned with decoration on the top of the roof and on the two corners, such as this found from the top of the Parthenon. The block on the roof to support this sculpture from the Temple of Athena Nike survives and it is unusually large, it would have supported a statue that was much larger than any other temple of similar size. Based on fragments from ancient sources, it is thought to have shown Nike, or several representations of Nike, above a shield. This decoration would have been visible coming up the ramp to the Acropolis. The bastion itself also had a series of bronze shields, so we can imagine visitors to the Acropolis being greeted by statues of gold and bronze, along with a series of rows of shields on the bastion. The temple largely survived throughout the centuries, until it was dismantled in the late 17th century by the Turks to use the stones to help build defenses on the Acropolis. But it was able to be reconstructed in the 1830s and was restored again to increase stability. The frieze was found built into some of the walls of the Acropolis. A replica of the frieze was added to the temple. Thank you for joining us at History Victorum. If you have any other theories of what this frieze could represent, feel free to let me know in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching.